If you're watching this on YouTube and you have a question, comment, suggestion, or maybe you just want to find out more information about the product, you can find the link below. Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds with 3GameMan.com and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Fractal Design Arc Mini R2 case. It comes in this plain looking box, but it does have pictures of the product on it as well as features and specifications about it, plus two holes one in either side, so if you are picking this up in store, you can just grab it and go. It's packaged very well between two pieces of styrofoam and the case itself is in a plastic bag. Included is a user's manual and a little note on receiving a faulty product. If, for example, there is something wrong with it, contact the reseller or Fractal Design. They include a number of email addresses here as well as a phone number just in case. Now at the front, they have this strip of tape just to hold this piece of mesh in place and on the left side panel window they have protective plastic. This is a micro ATX case. It fits micro ATX and mini ITX motherboards. The overall look, styling and build quality on this is really really nice. At the top they have this large piece of mesh and below it is a dust filter and by the way this top panel can be completely removed if needed. Now you can install up to two optional 120 millimeter fans at the top. They include one 140 millimeter fan. You can add another 140 if you want to or of course you can have a combination of either and another option is you can install a pretty large radiator at the top. At the top front is the reset button which by the way is recessed so it's not easily pressed. A quality power button and alongside of it is a power LED. There are two audio jacks. One is for the microphone and the other the headset. There are two USB 3 ports as well as a fan speed control. There are three different settings. You've got the high 12 volt, medium 7 volt, and the low 5 volt speed. Now this front panel looks like it's aluminum, but it isn't. It's actually plastic. Note that there are two five and a quarter inch drive bays. More mesh at the front to allow for excellent ventilation, and it does include a fan filter. Behind here you can install two 120 millimeter fans, and they include one 120 millimeter fan, and note their logo. This front panel is easily removed by pulling at the bottom. With it removed, you can see the included 120 millimeter fan, which by the way, intakes cool air as well as the dust filter for both and you can install another 120 millimeter fan. On the left side panel they include a very large window but the right side panel is plain. Remember I said the top panel can be removed? Well to do so all you need to do is take off these two convenient thumb screws at the back and just comes right off and note the very large dust filter that they include. With the top panel removed you can see the included 140 millimeter exhaust fan that they have which is at the back but again you can install an optional 140 millimeter fan at the front or a couple of 120 millimeter fans or a radiator. At the back at the very top they include two rubber grommeted holes and this is for routing cables and or water cooling tubes through. Note the included 120 millimeter exhaust fan Here's where the motherboard's I.O. shield plate gets installed. They include five ventilated expansion slots. There are four here and another one on this side. You can install a standard ATX power supply at the bottom and they include four thumb screws, two on each side panel. Oh, and I almost forgot the window is smoked so it really gives the case a nice look. While there is a window and you can see inside, you know, it still kind of preserves that black look. Inside the case they include this accessory box and in it the basic stuff like screws, some cable ties and whatnot. As I mentioned previously this case fits micro ATX and mini ITX form factor motherboards. Unfortunately the motherboard tray is not removable but on the tray they include lots of punch outs as well as holes which by the way have rubber grommets on them so you can organize the cables behind the motherboard. Plus you've got a large hole on the motherboard tray for the cooler's retention plate. There isn't a toolless design for installing drives in any of the drive bays. However, the top hard drive cage here can be removed if needed by taking off two thumb screws and the bottom one can as well, but it requires a bit more work and taking off regular screws. But note that both of these can be removed and you can install up to three drive 
drives in each, whether they be three and a half inch or two and a half inch. Now to install a three and a half inch or two and a half inch drive, just pinch on either side and slide it out like so. And by the way, this is a metal drive cage, so it's not flimsy. And they include these rubber grommets when you're installing a three and a half inch drive, and that's to prevent vibrations. Once you've installed the drive, slide it back into place. No fancy toolless design on the expansion slots either, but really doesn't matter because they include thumb screws on all of them. At the bottom, they include four rubber rests for the power supply to lodge on, and you can install an optional 120 millimeter fan here. But note that power supply length will vary. It depends on whether you have the optional 120 millimeter fan installed or not. If you have a 120 millimeter fan installed, you can have a power supply that is up to 170 millimeters in length. Otherwise, you can have a power supply that is up to 220 millimeters in length. Not only do you have these four rubber feet for the power supply to lodge on, but they also include a rubber gasket at the back. Now, as for video card length, it will vary as well. It depends on whether you have the top hard drive cage installed or not. If you have it installed, you can fit a video card that is up to 260 millimeters in length, but if you have this top cage removed, you can fit a video card that is up to 400 millimeters in length. And cooler height is 165 millimeters. And by the way, these hydraulic bearing Silent Series 2 fans include a sleeved lead and a three pin connector. Now, if you're thinking about putting water cooling in this case, you're going to want to know how large of radiator you can fit at the top. Well, you can fit up to two different sizes, either a 240 millimeter or 360 millimeter radiator. At the bottom, they include four rubber feet and these are pretty high. So that means that the case is going to be elevated off of the surface that is on so the bottom fan or fans can do their job and intake cool air. And note the included removable dust filter. With the right side panel removed, have a look behind the motherboard tray. Again, they have all of these cable management holes. They have rubber grommets on them as well as lots of punch outs. Get the cables out of the main part of the case because it looks bad and plus it will increase airflow. And by the way, there is 20 millimeters of space behind the motherboard tray and the right side panel. Now, while you can fit up to six three and a half inch or six two and a half inch drives, as a bonus, you can install two more two and a half inch drives behind the motherboard tray on these two included brackets. Finally, have a listen to the stock cooling. Feature-wise, this is a pretty basic case. However, it looks fantastic. The overall styling and build quality on this is exceptional, and it does have enough features to keep most people happy. As well, it's affordable. Plus, you can add more fans. You've got the option to go water cooling. And while this is a mini case, it is pretty large. So if you're thinking about a micro ATX build with plenty of space on the inside to install video cards, water cooling gear, lots of space to organize the cables behind the motherboard tray. I think this would probably be a case that you would be interested in. Overall, this is a kick-ass product. Until next time, take care. How do you think this product stacks up? To vote, head on over to 3dgameman.com. And while you're there, check out the pricing.